Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to use the dodge and the burn tool um, to affect our lighting and to pull the other things that we've done um, a little more together. So if you've noticed, I have constructed my document into three layers right now. Okay, so if I hide those, here's my original. Um, then I made a copy. I've done some spot healing and started to do wrinkles around the eyes, although there's still a little work I could do there. And then I actually just duplicated that um, repaired layer and made it on this new one that I called Level Dodge and Burn. And on this layer, I'm going to show you some basic lighting um, changes that we can do. So the first thing that we could do would be to do an overall levels adjustment. This is going to affect the entire document. Remember we talked about this in a previous video that this histogram shows me the levels of darks and lights and will help you restore um, perhaps a more contrasted version of your photo. Um, when you see a graph that doesn't start right at the ends, when it starts kind of in the chart sum, one of the most basic um, edits and changes you can do is to move the black and the white markers to the start of that graph. Now technically I had some um, value over here all the way at the very white, but if you look at the difference at the before and the after, this is doing quite a bit to just even and get me closer to where I need to be from the very beginning. So I'm going to say OK and be done there. Um, but now I'm going to do some actual specific changes about um, where I want to be um, lightening and darkening. So I've made a, another layer of where we're going to head to. Okay, so this is after I have done this. And I'm going to show you how I've gotten here. So we've done that overall level um, change and now we're going to talk about the dodge and the burn tool. So the dodge and, oops, sorry, let's zoom in. The dodge and the burn tool are used to specifically darken and specifically lighten areas. Dodge lightens, burn um, makes darker. Okay. Now, for each of the, both the burn and the dodge tool, we can choose whether we want to affect shadows, midtones, or highlights, and you can decide how high the exposure is. So the higher the exposure, if I make a big brush here, will really significantly darken. Okay, so for all of this that we're about to do, we're going to be really kind of obnoxiously low on our exposure. Um, you want your brush to be all the way zero at hardness so that everything is nice and soft. And I'm going to go slowly, but if you can see the difference, right, we're just darkening along the edges. Now, if you go to our Pinterest board, um, there's a couple of uh, pins there that talk about how and specifically. This one's actually um, having you add another layer and to paint and use blend modes. So you can absolutely try that. Um, it's kind of fun. It works really nicely with black and white photos. But if you look at this map here, how we're talking about the, at the hairline, along the eyes, edges of nose, cheekbones, and down in the neck. That's where I'm going to pay attention to when I am burning and dodging. So I would like to darken along here. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller. I'm going to darken here at the top of the eyes, along the side of the nose, okay, side of the cheek. Scroll down, down here at the bottom of the neck. Okay. Um, so I've been working on the shadows. We can also do the same on the mid-tone layer, which will affect the middle areas. You want this to be slow. But I want you to notice we really are accomplishing quite a bit. Okay. Um, but if you go too fast, one, this is a very click happy moment in your history. Um, here. So if we open our history window, you'll see right now it's nothing but burn tool. Um, so you're not going to be able to step backwards, which is another good reason to keep layers happening. So right now I've darkened some things. Now let's do some lightening. So I'm going to take my dodge tool. Again, keep my exposure down pretty low. You can work on um, shadows, midtones, or highlights. My suggestion is to start at the midtone. If you go right to the highlight, some very strange things can happen color-wise. So we're going to brighten the top of the nose, go a little bit bigger, do here at the center of the forehead, tops of cheeks. If you need to go back and refer to that picture again, right here are the lighter areas, chin, forehead, top of eyes. Okay, so um, that does mean I'm going to need to get a little specific in here because I need to uh, go right here on the top. Nope, not there, sorry. Um, right here at the top. So I need to make a tool that's small enough to get right here at the top of my eye. Oh, and now we're burning and not my brush. So sorry about that. So let's go back to dodge and there we go.
go. So we're going to brighten right here. And I can see it slowly starting to add. Okay. So we need to go over here on this side a little bit and do the same over there. Um, you can, if you over brighten, you can certainly go back and darken. Um, but be cautious. Too much of that can do some strange things with your color. So you want to be cautious about too much. Okay. Um, so when you are done, you should get yourself someplace that looks a little bit like this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the one I was practicing on. And we're going to leave this one right here. Okay. Um, and then one more thing I want to show you is talk about eyes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer one more time for you, just so I can show you a before and after. And I'm going to zoom in really, really, really close. And we're going to talk about what to do with eyes. There's another pin on our board that talks about um, how you can burn and dodge eyes in order to uh, make them look even brighter. So if you notice the red areas, those are where I want to dodge. That's where I want to lighten. Okay, so the whites and the inside of the iris. And then it wants me to burn blue around the edge, eyelashes and eyelashes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get my um, dodge tool. And we're going to go ahead and very specifically right in the center and do the irises. So we're going to be gentle about this. Um, it won't take a whole lot for it to be making changes. Um, I suggest at always just to kind of show the before and after so you can see it's not a huge change, but it's happening. Okay. And then um, after I feel like we have brightened enough, we're going to go ahead and get my burn tool again, slow and small. And we're going to darken around the edge. We're going to darken eyelashes. I'm at the midtones right now, so I'm going to move to shadows and size my brush smaller. And again, darken. Don't forget to do the inside of the pupil. Um, I do often like to click, click, click as opposed to drag. Okay, so if we look at the before and after, okay, that's not so bad. So let's zoom out a second, okay, and see the before and the after. So we're really slow about this. We don't want it to be a huge um, unnatural change. What we're looking for is to just enhance and to make things a little bit nicer than they were. That is our plan right here. Okay, so again, we are brightening highlights. I'm going to go back to midtones. I'm going to brighten midtones. You certainly could try and see what happens when you click shadows that will dark, brighten even the darker parts. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to my burn tool. And now I'm on my shadows. So I'm darkening shadows. I'm going along the eyelashes. Okay. And zoom back. And let's see what we got. So there's before, here's after, okay? Definitely not bad at all. Um, another thing that we could try would be to, and I would do a selection at this point, I think. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick selection so that I can grab just the chunk of the eye. Oh, and you know what? Actually, before I do that, time out. Um, I forgot to brighten the whites of the eyes. So let's do that really fast. Because that will help a whole lot, and I just plumb forgot. So there, we're gonna go over there, and right here. Be cautious; you don't really need it to be white, white. That'll be off awkward. So, quick selection tool. We're gonna grab the inside alt to keep it mostly here. Um, a tip: if you have not figured out uh, quick mask yet. Down here at the very bottom of your colors um, is a little shape that looks an awful lot like a layer mask. If I click on that, it's going to let me use a paintbrush to add to my mask just like I would um, on your layer mask. And it's an awfully handy way to refine a selection because you can use your paintbrush to do it as opposed to um, one of those lasso or magic wands. It's kind of fun. Okay. And then it's just a toggle. I can go back out and I've got a selection of my eye. Um, and so I might try vibrance. This might be a good place to see um, if increasing my vibrance a little bit here on this layer, if I like that. Um, and I think that that is a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to deselect and we're going to zoom out and see the before and the after. 
and I think that's pretty good. Um, so that combined with the airbrushing. So we'll do that one more time here on this video and then we'll wrap it up. So I'm going to grab a brand new layer. It's empty. We're going to grab the color that I want to be happening. So I'm going to grab right here on the cheek and then take a paintbrush. Make sure that my opacity is really low. Make sure that my hardness is all the way low. And on this new layer, let's go ahead and get bigger than that, um, we are going to very slowly and softly airbrush in. So that was probably a little brighter than I needed to be. So let's go ahead and go a little softer than that. Um, and this will help you to smooth out any kind of skin tone. Don't forget to keep changing your brush to match wherever you happen to be. Um, this is also a place that you can um, increase or do any kind of eye makeup. So let's say that I would like um, my lips to be a little bit brighter. So I've grabbed the color of my lips. I'm going to get even closer. And this is the color that they it started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit more intense. So I'm going to start slow. And now take my brush and just really slowly We'll go a little higher just so we can see it nicer here. We're going to paint on top. Now, I am actually painting literally right on top, okay, and I'm not even staying any anywhere near close to my line. Um, but the nice thing is because it's its own layer, I can take the eraser and I can come back and fix that. Um, my eraser has an awfully hard edge right there, so let's lower that so it can be soften. Um, and that way I can... Um, clean up and not have to be as precise. Often it's easier to go back and p fix the outside than the other direction. Okay. Um, and then we can add color happening there. Okay. Um, that is still awfully see or opaque, which is a little funky. So let's take my opacity of my eraser down and make a much bigger eraser and soften that just a little bit. It's better. Okay. Um, so um, I would like you to take one of your pictures that um, has got good lighting and is a good full front of a face and um, do those three steps. Okay. So you're going to use spot healing. You're going to play with levels and dodge, making sure that you're addressing the lighting on the whole face and the eyes and teeth, um, and then experimenting and playing with how airbrushing could be incorporated into your document. And that's a wrap.